Welcome back to Arthritis Now. If you missed part one of our interview with Dr. Ann Stevens, check it out right here. If not, sit back and relax and let's jump right in. Yeah, and are there any specific kinds of drugs that you have been um, kind of developing with any doctors to to kind of come up with um, different cures for patients? So we have a couple of programs where we're investigating uh, new approaches to treatment. One is with a local company in Seattle called Kineta, hmm. and they have a, a little peptide that's derived from a sea anemone that targets just one of these white blood cells, which we think is overly active and causing the problem in chronic autoimmune diseases. And it leaves the rest of the immune system alone. So it would be far better than the corticosteroids and um, chemotherapy treatments that we now use for these diseases that wipe out the entire immune system. The project is with a, a, a group at the University of Washington um, to target this PDL1 molecule. They're little peptides that they're putting into cages, which will be able to go directly to the T cells and trigger that PDL1 signal. So on, on, a, on a kind of a different front, the, uh, there's been kind of a recurring theme with a few of the other um, researchers that we've interviewed on juvenile arthritis and how it relates to oral health and oral hygiene, and maybe that could be a trigger for arthritis. Do you, what are your, have you researched that at all, or um, what are your findings on that? Yeah, we've done a, kind of a pilot study where we studied 160 kids with either dental problems or juvenile arthritis. And I have a collaborator at the dental school at the University of Washington who organized the dentists into doing full oral health uh, evaluations of these kids. And we could assess their extent of arthritis, how many joints they had, how bad their arthritis was. And what we found is that in general, the kids with juvenile arthritis have really healthy mouths that they have um, very good dental hygiene. However, there's this one marker of, of active inflammation in the gums that is higher in the, dental, in the, in the juvenile arthritis patients. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a hint that maybe this inflammation starts in the mouth. And um, what we don't know is are the same bacteria that have been implicated in adult rheumatoid arthritis as triggering inflammation in the mouth that then goes to the joints, are those same bacteria in the juvenile arthritis patients. So we've collected plaque from the teeth of these kids, and we're in the process of sequencing all the bacteria in that plaque and identifying patterns that are in the juvenile arthritis patients that are different from what we see in the control patients and what's different in the, the patients with a lot of active disease. So, so there's probably not a correlation between like gingivitis predisposing to arthritis then? It's an interesting question because the, the, um, the dentists who treat gingivitis and then when it progresses on into periodontitis, which is the erosion of the bone, which is very similar to what we see in the joints eroding the bones with arthritis, um, that they're, um, the children, it's very rare for children to get that really aggressive bone periodontitis. Um, but the children that do get it seem to have immunodeficiency, so they have poor function of some of their white blood cells. So it brings up the question of, is, is juvenile arthritis really a type of immunodeficiency? Is there a de deficit in the immune system that is allowing these bacteria to grow, and these bacteria then can cause the periodontitis, and then they can also cause the joint problem? But it wasn't from an overreactive immune system in the first place, it was rather a defective immune system. Hmm. And then can you, I know you, I mean, you've been funded by NRF. Can you kind of explain um, what that grant kind of meant to you and kind of how it kind of put you on the trajectory that you're on now? Oh, wow. It meant everything. <laughs> <laughs> this grant was a grant I was, I was um, funded with at the very beginning of my faculty career. So I, I think I applied for it at the end of my fellowship, which is the end of rheumatology training. And when you enter into a faculty position, it's a very precarious time because we have to support 80% of our own salaries with our um, grants. And um, on top of that, we need to hire some help. So this grant was through that initial time of being able to secure a faculty job, which I did at the University of Washington, which put me on a fantastic track in this environment, and be able to hire my very first technician. <laughs> 
um, who could help me to, to launch the projects that I'm still pursuing now. Um, and, and do you have anything kind of coming up next or anything that you're excited to, you might want to share or, or a preview of kind of what, any special projects that you're working on? Yeah, the, the, our work in um, scleroderma is really taking off right now. And this is through um, a national organization of pediatric rheumatologists called the Childhood Arthritis and Rheumatology Research Alliance, the CARA group. We have um, been working together because pediatric rheumatologists are few and far between. We've organized ourselves as, as a country to be able to, to study diseases that are very rare. Scleroderma is an extremely rare disease. It's taken me 16 years to, to um, enroll enough patients in my, my um, study to be able to really do science with the samples that I receive. Um, and this spring, we had the very first meeting at the care at, uh, of one of the care groups to study the scleroderma lung disease, the systemic sclerosis that hits the lungs and the internal organs, where we're now going to be developing the very first classification systems, because we don't really have any systems for how to diagnose pediatric systemic sclerosis, the scleroderma. We don't know how to measure whether a patient's getting better or not. So we can't run any clinical trials because we don't even know what we would measure. So we have a team that's doing that. We have another team that's working with patient groups to decide what do patients and families really think improvement in their disease means because we really want to measure that. And then we have an international um, collaboration that developed out of that April meeting with the European um, pediatric rheumatologists to work together so that when we do studies, they will be doing studies too, and we can collaborate and combine all our data together. For sure, it's very exciting. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, we wish you like the best of luck with it, and um, we're excited to see kind of where it where it goes. So, congratulations. Thank you again for your early, early support. It just makes all the difference. Thanks for watching our interview with Dr. Ann Stevens and her research in autoimmunity. I'd like to send a special thank you to everyone at ANRF and everyone in the arthritis community for supporting the show for the past two years. ANRF plans to do more episodes of Arthritis Now, so make sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel and check out their updates at curearthritis.org. If you'd like to keep up with me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Kai Lang. Thanks again.